collative properties. If we add a non-volatile solute, and by that we mean one that does not readily evaporate, so this is not like adding gasoline or something that will evaporate quickly. If we add a non-volatile solute to a liquid, that will extend the temperature range over which the liquid remains a liquid. That sounds kind of silly, but... If you get a liquid too cold, it freezes. If you get it too warm, it boils and turns into a gas. And this will exchange, extend the temperature range. So the solution has a lower melting point, so we call that freezing point depression, and it has a higher boiling point, and that's called boiling point elevation. And this makes me think of the poor citrus farmers in the winter. And there's a, a cold, you know, a heavy freeze warning. and The citrus growers have freezing point depression. Mm -hmm. I think that joke would go over better in Reedley. Anyway, um, what's interesting about these is they depend on the number of solute particles. It doesn't depend on what the solute particles are. Kind of interesting. I think I screwed up in my slides here and edited one and forgot to delete the other. I think this is the one I meant to keep, but these are called colligative properties. And colligative properties depend on the number, not the type of particles. Um, examples are adding salt to ice is going to lower the melting point. If you've ever made homemade ice cream, you know that you have to add salt to the ice in the bucket, otherwise they won't freeze. The salt lowers the melting point of the ice and allows it to be colder than if there was no salt. Salt is also used to melt snow and ice on roads. I grew up in Minnesota, and so this was a pretty common thing. You get sometimes just glazed ice on your sidewalk, and if you throw salt out there, it will actually melt the ice, even though the actual temperature is below the freezing point of water. Ethylene glycol is what is in antifreeze, and you put it in the radiator of your car with water to raise the boiling point of the water and lower the freezing point. We don't care so much about the freezing point around here. It rarely gets cold enough that your radiator and engine block could freeze solid. In Minnesota, it does. You got ethylene glycol in there, it freezes at a lower temperature, and so that protects your car. What we care about here is more the boiling point. You don't want your radiator boiling. There's a pressure gauge on the radiator. When it boils, it forms a gas, a lot of pressure, and it lets the water out of your radiator. And after a while, it'll boil dry, and then your engine overheats, and you've got a lot of trouble. So this raises the boiling point and makes it a better coolant for your car. So in order to talk about freezing point depression and boiling point elevation, we need yet another unit. Um, so we use molality. That looks a lot like molarity, doesn't it? This one letter is different. There's molality and molarity. They're different. The abbreviation for this one is a lowercase m. The abbreviation for the other one is a capital M. Molality is moles of solute, that part's the same, but kilograms of solvent, not liters of solution or grams of solution. It's the solvent this time. Um, the only place we're going to use molality in this class is for this one little section about freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. And it's definitely not my favorite unit. But just notice that this is kilograms of solvent. It's different than the other ones. So let's calculate the molality of a sucrose solution containing 50.4 grams of sucrose and 0 0.332 kilograms of water. So they're asking for molality. So we need to look at that equation. Molality equals moles of solute per kilogram solvent. So those are the two things we have to find, moles of solute, kilograms of solvent. 
Do they give us either of those? I don't see a mole in there. I do see a kilogram. 0.332 kilograms of water. Is water the solution? It's the solvent. That's what we need for the denominator. 0.332 kilograms of water. That's the kilograms of solvent. Up here, we need moles of solute. What did they give us? They gave us grams, a mass of sucrose. But we know how to convert that to moles. 50.4 grams of sucrose times, we're going to multiply by moles, divide by grams. Now I can say, we calculated this molar mass earlier, 342.4. 296 grams per mole. Since we wrote it out and calculated it earlier, I really don't see the point in doing it again. 50.4 divided by 342.296 equals 0 0.14724. This number should have three significant figures. I wrote down a, a couple extras just to avoid rounding errors. 0.14724 moles of solute. I still have that number in my calculator. I'm just going to leave it there and divide by 0.332. And I should keep three significant figures, 0 0.443, what's the unit? Moles per kilogram. Which is also abbreviated with a lowercase m. What I really don't like about the lowercase m it sure looks like meters, but it isn't. Any questions? So we actually have an equation that will help us to calculate how much does the freezing point go down. And this is the equation. Delta Tf, delta meaning change in, the change in the freezing temperature is equal to the molality times a constant. This constant is called the freezing point depression constant because it helps us with freezing point depression. And it's going to be different for different solvents. This is something that you would either be given in a problem or um, you would have to go look it up somewhere. On an exam, I'll give it to you. So we can do problems with this. Calculate the freezing point of an aqueous 2.6 molar sucrose solution. When they say aqueous, what does that mean? It means the solvent is water. And I didn't want to have to go look stuff up, so I typed the KF in here. This is the freezing point depression constant for water. It's 1.86 degrees Celsius times kilogram solvent over mole solute. And that's just because of how the equation is set up. So delta Tf equals the molality times that constant. The molality is given to us, 2.6, that lowercase m means moles per kilogram solvent times 1.86 degrees Celsius kilograms per mole. 
and these units cancel out. I'm left with a unit of degrees Celsius. 1.86 times 2.6 equals, so the freezing point depression, the change in the freezing point is equal to 4.8 degrees Celsius. Common mistake is to stop there. Yay, I calculated something. Yeah. That's not the freezing point of the sucrose solution. That's the difference. That's the amount that the freezing point gets depressed or lowered. What's the normal freezing point of water? Zero. So zero degrees is where it normally freezes. Adding sugar to it makes it freeze at a lower temperature. So we're going to subtract the difference. And we're going to end up with a freezing point of minus 4.8 degrees Celsius. A good way to um, quickly cool off a soda or, you know, maybe a can of beer is to take one of those uh, big double gulp cups and stick the can in there and fill it with up to the top with ice and then some cold water. And that'll get your beverage ice cold. If you want it super cold, throw some salt in there too. And it'll get even colder, right? Just remember to rinse the top of the can off before you drink out of it, because it'll be salty. It can be extra cold that way. And then you don't run the risk of forgetting it in the freezer and having it explode all over the place. That's not a good scene. So the freezing point goes down, the boiling point goes up. It extends the range. It's important to remember what direction these things are moving. I, I remember struggling with that. Well, I know they changed, but I couldn't remember which was elevating and which was depressing. It's like, is it feed a fever, starve a cold, or the other way around? It's hard to remember. I think they're both old wives' tips. But. The way I remember this now is think about antifreeze. What do you want antifreeze to do in your car? You want to protect the car from freezing, so you want the freezing point to go down. You want to protect it from boiling over, so you want the boiling point to go up. It moves these two temperatures away from each other, is what it does. So the boiling point, when you've got something in it, salt or sugar or something, the boiling point's going to be higher. So the equation for boiling point elevation is really similar to the equation for freezing point depression. All that's changed is the subscript. We've got a B for boiling and a B for boiling instead of F for freezing. Again, KB is different for different solvents, and KB is not the same as KF. It's going to affect the freezing point and boiling point differently. So we can do um, an example for this one as well. Calculate the boiling point of a 3.5 molar glucose solution. And we're given the um, boiling point elevation constant. That was a save. So the equation is delta Tb. The, the elevation of the boiling point is equal to the molality times that constant. So there's the 3.5 molal moles per kilogram times the 0.512 degrees Celsius kilograms per mole. Kilograms cancel, moles cancel. We end up with uh, degrees Celsius. 3.5 times 0.512. Again, this is going to have two sig figs because of the 3.5. The change in boiling point is 1.8. So what is the new boiling point? It's going to be 101.8. Because water, pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And we need to add this and so we're going to end up with a new boiling point of 101.8 degrees Celsius.
Now, these two examples are about as straightforward as it can get. There are ways that they can make it more complicated, and they probably do that in the homework I assigned. I don't remember. They could give you a concentration that is not molality. They could make you calculate the molality. Or they could give you um, a new boiling point and ask you to, to calculate the molality based on that. They could say, well, what if the water boiled at 105 degrees Celsius? What's the molality of the solution? Well, the first thing you have to do is figure out what is delta Tb. If it boils at 105, and it's supposed to boil at 100, then you've got Tb being equal to 5. You know this constant, and so you rearrange the equation and solve for m. My guess is there's at least one homework problem like that. Any questions?